If they get the chance They were born in bloody circumstance To go everyone welcome to the scottish rugby podcast it is myself john anderson in the hot seat tonight uh we are going to have a look at the urc which is kicking off again we are back it'll be kicking off tomorrow night and we are all very excited about that um joining me tonight we have well we might have some more special guests joining us in due course but at the moment we have my brother from another mother it's ian hay himself how are you doing pal Hello everyone, um, all nine people watching, and uh, you may notice something missing. This is true. It is not uh, just uh, not just no. our our, our uh, esteemed normal chairperson, host, and all round good guy Cami that is missing. No, no, Ian has. Uh, for those on audio, Ian has lost a bit of his facial fluff. Um, you do look about forty years younger, pal. Yeah, Benjamin Button. Um, yeah, I, I was a bit concerned when I saw the photo at first. I, I wasn't sure, like, do you know in Harry Potter when, like, when Voldemort becomes that like screeching baby thing, like in the last film? I was a bit concerned you'd become that. You know, I've I've never actually I've only seen the first Harry Potter because um, I've just been a bit one of these. I wouldn't say snobby. I was just like, no, nah, everyone else likes it, so yeah. I'm not going to just to be difficult. And so then like, you know, now that J.K. Rowling has out of herself, I was about to watch them as well. I'd said to Rona, I was like, oh. you know, I might, I might watch these just so I get more of the the pop culture references. But yeah. uh, I think you should commit to it Ian, and, and and watch it. I think I think it's it's still worth it. Um, even aside from J.K.'s obvious intolerance. Um, but uh, no, definitely, you look like you've been revived by a Horcrux. So uh, Scot- uh, any Scottish rugby Harry Potter fans out there who get that reference, thank you and good night. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's good to see you looking fresh faced, pal. It will be back as soon as it's back, and it will be going again. As soon as it's back, 
Yes. Do you, do you like do you, so? I, I remember when I was at school. It was like obviously you know when you're when you're like so. I was obviously quite a beardy guy at school uh, from quite an early age. But like all my wee mates and stuff like that were always dead like keen to grow beards. And there was used to be like their older brothers and stuff used to tell them rumors like, "I if you put conditioner in your face every day, it will help your beard grow," and things like that. So there was like people with like full scale conditioner regimes. Go on, try to grow like a wee bit of bum fluff. Um, ah, out, outrageous. It's, it's a valid form of ID in many bars as well. It, well, it's, exactly. I, 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 yeah, I don't think I've been ID since I was about fourteen. To be fair, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good good form that. And uh, there was a bar in Aberdeen. We'll, we'll come to rugby in a minute. There was a bar in Aberdeen that used to get uh, free entry if you had a mullet as well, uh, which uh, I occasionally grew my hair out a wee bit. Yes, this was before. I, I looked like uh, like like uh, a baldy boy. Um, we used to go and get a wee free entry in a rock bar where we mullet. So good times. Be the entire All Black squad get in there. Then <laughs> well, they, they absolutely could, and we will come to our the All Blacks boys. I'm sure at some point uh, during tonight's uh, proceedings. But we are here for Scottish rugby, of course. Um, first, of all, we'll get the nonsense out of the way. If you like the rubbish that me and Ian have just been ex- uh, 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 exchanging there, you can come along, you can become one of our patrons, and you will get extra special content, uh, including... Ian has... Uh, you, you, you've just put out some extra content for the patrons, haven't you, Ian? Yes, there was an interview. When are, we're putting it on the main one soon, aren't we? We're going to put it on the main one soon, yes, but we've yes. popped it out for our patrons only at the moment, just to uh, give them a wee bit of a sneak preview. So Ian had an interview with, now let me get the names right, Rory and James. James, yeah, because because it's Rory and James and Gordon and Peter, it's like, I mean, basically it's like a Thomas the Tank Engine episode. I get very <laughs> confused. But yeah, so uh, there's a book being written about Peter and, Peter and Gordon Brown, uh, famous Scottish internationalists, and Ian had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Rory and I forgot his name. <laughs> James. James. Why is that not sticking? Yeah. Rory and James. Scottish uh, name. That's a really good Scottish name as well, yeah. So, so how, how was the interview anyway? Was it good fun? It was good, yes. Um, I certainly enjoyed it, and I think they did as well. Um, unfortunately, because it was... Uh, I forgot, like, the Zoom professional trial has ended. So, <laughs> like, that countdown came, on. I was like, oh, I better wrap this up. Um, but, uh, yeah, we covered quite a lot of bases, um, and you should go get the book. You should go and get the book in. You should come and join us on Patreon and hear Ian's interview. Uh, amongst a whole host of other content, you also get access to our world-famous exclusive Hands in the Ruck section, which is where the guests and myself cut loose a wee bit, get a wee bit of our sweary on and put the world of rugby to rights. If you head over to patreon.com slash scottishrugbypod, you can get onto uh, the Patreon. It's £3 a month, or if you're feeling very, very generous, you could put your hand in for £5 a month, and that gets you a membership of the Patreon and gets you the exclusive content and access to our super secret, wonderful, fantastic Qdan Facebook page, where one of our Patreons... They've not posted it on here or there, but I am I, I follow her on Twitter, and there has been a revelation, and we will come to this, because I think something has been completed during this, and I'm going to get to play a jingle as well, which is class, but we'll come to that oh, later it's... in the episode. I'm very excited about this. this We've not had a the... good jingle in a while, have we? No, do you know, that's why I keep the hands in the ruck jingle going for the, for the Patreons, but you know what, the freemium, you're going to get a wee jingle tonight, I'm feeling it. But we are not here to talk nonsense about uh, <laughs> all sorts of rock bars and Harry Potter. We are here to talk about Scottish rugby. Uh, um, we we will be looking at the URC, as I said. Uh, URC is back. Uh, the uh, United Rugby JC, uh, JZ Championship is back with us. And we kick off tomorrow night. Uh, Glasgow are away at my favourite side in the world, Benetton. And... Edinburgh are at home to Cardiff, which dragons. Uh, oh, dragons, not Cardiff. Why? I was reading an article in Cardiff just before this. That's what that was. There we go. The dragons. Thank you, Ian. So, um, yeah. So we'll start with because we've not got our Edinburgh resident uh, correspondent here. Uh, we'll start on the the west side. Uh, Glasgow are going away to uh, to Benetton. I've said a few times, Ian, that this shouldn't be a fixture that we are terribly worried about. 
to it and everyone scoffs at me. What's your view on it? It shouldn't be, but it has of late um, because we've not been very good. No, Benton, uh, it's, but I don't think we lost in Italy for something like 10 years, did we? And then all of a sudden... Yeah, it was ridiculous. You know, Benton had... Uh, they finished third, wasn't it? Um, three seasons ago, so just yep. pre-COVID. Um, but again, you know, they've... Obviously, we spoke about this the other week. Um, they've lost Monte Ioanni, uh, their, their key attacking threat. They yeah. still have some decent players, like I'm a big fan of uh, Ignacio Brex. I think he's pretty good. Yep. Um, Negri and Bram staying in the back row. Um, obviously, Italy Internationals, who uh, Italy can sometimes cause Scotland a bit of bother. Um, we, we should be looking to win and hopefully um, to start Franco Smith's reign off in style. I've not actually seen well, their that, team well, yet. That, this is it. It's, no, I've I've not seen the team sheet yet either. But I mean, that, this is the thing, right? So we're we're in a. It's the start of a new season. We've got a new coach who, frankly, has barely got his feet under the desk. You know, he's he's not been in post very long. Um, new captain, as well. Um, in Kyle Stain, it's. I think, for me, it was necessary that we had a lot of change. And you know, I was I was advocating the the Wilson out card quite early doors, um, and it's interesting looking at the team. There's there's a, there's a, certainly some new faces in there, some uh, some interesting calls as well. So let's let's just have a look at the team just now. So we've got uh, Jamie Batty. We're just going in order. I'm not going fifteen nine, and then we're going to go one to fifteen like normal people here. So we've got Jamie Jamie Batty, Fraser Brown, and Oshio Sordoni. Um, as, as the front row, interesting. Fraser Brown gets the nod over Johnny Matthews. That certainly wasn't the the, the preference last season. Maybe it's a leadership thing, um, or you know, leave Johnny Matthews to strike at the end, like the try scoring Viper That's machine that, yeah. is. Um, <laughs> yeah, before, you know, like I said, you know, maybe a, a sort of experience thing with, with Fraser Brown. So, uh, well, we say experience, but then he'll give. Give away at least one daft penalty. Um, it will be a no arms chop tackle or obstruction. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Put that on the Paddy Power right now. Um, there's, there's, your, there's, your, there's your certainties. Oh, yeah, your top tips there. Um, yeah. Sordoni only on a short term deal, but uh, obviously he must have interesting been seeing him getting the, the nod over Fagerson, though, as well. You know, obviously, um, and the, the picture that we saw coming out, Fagerson obviously saying this is his ninth season with the Warriors, yeah. uh, which is incredible, by right. the way. Um, but he was looking, he was looking a bit trim, he was looking quite uh, quite slim down, actually. Yeah, he was looking pretty lean, and I'm sure tight heads across the world were horrified at this. So. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure I said somebody, oh, who was it replied? Was it Pierre Schoen? It's like, get some chips. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Shuey and uh, Rory Sutherland were battering in, weren't they? They were giving yeah. dogs abuse. So that's front row alliance is strong there, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. Has he maybe had a, an injury he's been working back from? or? Um, well, not... as, I mean, he had a long season. I don't, I, don't I, mm. I haven't heard anything about an injury, so perhaps, yeah. but. Yeah, it just maybe he's just oh, done a wee do bit. Want, do you want to know something terrible? What? Ben, I was looking up the Bennett team. I'll try to find it on their Twitter. And they, they don't. They don't have a team sheet. They've got a damn video. Oh no, 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 no! I'm, come on, I'm going to watch no, a video. No no, no, no. If you're going to watch a video, go and mute. Um, no, no. <laughs> outrageous, outrageous. Uh, moving on to the Saint Rose, we've got Lewis, Lewis Bean and Richie Gray um, with um, Scott Cummings is on the bench. Um, mm. Perhaps slightly surprised. Uh, I mean, Lewis Bean has always been workmanlike, but for me, that's too lazy. Not lazy. Lazy is such a harsh word. To non work rate is not their primary asset. Second rows. Mobility. I would Mobility, say. Mobility. There we yeah, go. Yeah, they're, they're pretty agricultural. I think. <laughs> would be a, um, I mean. They're not small. No, uh, big units. But he's what six eight, six nine, and I Richie's like six nine, been. six ten. Yeah. Um, I saw somewhere. Uh, I can't mean who tweeted it, but um, the pack is 
45 kilograms heavier than than the average Wilson pack last year. Makes and sense. I think most of it is in those two, to be honest. <laughs> well, to be honest, we'll come on to the back row in a second, because I think that mm. adds a fair bit of heft as well. Um, maybe it's slightly surprised not to see, see Dupree uh, get a run out. Perhaps he's yeah. been working through. Uh, he doesn't see he's um I don't think he's not on the unavailable list. No, the... and he's not on the bench, so yeah, maybe they um, think course, it was one of like for courses, but if... yeah, because he's very similar to being in grey, so maybe they thought Cummings he's yeah. a wee bit more um you know he's getting around the park bit. better. Uh yeah. and he, you're still not going to lose anything at line outs. Um yeah. and obviously well I suppose with those two big lumps on, you know, and Fraser Brown, if he can get his darts right, you know, you're gonna sap the yeah. life out of the the Italy, um, Italy Mall. So maybe that's that's the thought process there. Yeah, and we'll come on come on to the back row now. A couple of the names you've mentioned actually already in the in the Benetton team with with Negri uh, Negri standing out as you know a, a phenomenal. I, I love watching him play. He's just such an aggressive. Uh, I'm just player. getting up to the back row now on the video. I, 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 <laughs> I t- tell me he's in it before I build this up, Ian. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> 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 it's uh, Pet- Petinelli, Zuliani at seven, and then uh, Canoni at eight. Right, okay. Canoni's so, quite good. Can- Canoni's a good player, yeah. And I mean, I think Glasgow will be happy with that, actually, because that, that's not... I mean, it's a decent back row, but it's not, not standout. And actually, the back row Glasgow have picked, which is, is quite interesting. You've got... Uh, uh, is it Mangese? Mange- Mangese, Mange- yes. Yeah, uh, six, boys. who is a lump of a big boy uh, for a six as well. He is a big loon. Um, you've got him at six. You've got Matt Fagerson at seven, and then Jack Dempsey at eight. So realistically, you've got three eights in the back row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is Mangese not? I thought he was more sort of five six a lock. Um... Uh, oh, you can. Go, yeah, I suppose. I suppose he can. Yeah, he probably hasn't played eight, but so, he's, I mean, he's yeah, big enough to play eight. And I think that sort of goes along with you know trying to drain Bennett and down first with the, you know sending the heavy artillery first. Yeah, it's, and then you know the snipers afterwards. Snipers um, after, but it's worth noting as well. Glasgow have picked a six-two split on the bench, mm. so I think the game plan is pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, and also two um, Darge and Gordon are both on the bench, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, so that's two, two know, fetchers. Mm, two, basically two sevens. Because you no, know, Fagerson isn't like, seen as there's no natural seven on the, the pitch. Fagerson's played there once, and I remember tweeting that's saying, it. "I actually think this could work." Uh, you know, he gets around the park and puts in his tackles. Yeah. He's pretty decent over the ball. Um, you know, we just want to see him probably taking kickoff receipts and doing as much carrying, uh, and then we get pumped. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that, that worked well. <laughs> uh, so you know, oh. Streetlights have just gone out. Um, so you know, maybe this is a, a chance to see if that works again. But uh, we all know what Dempsey provides. Um, so, uh, not seen a lot of Manjizi. Um, so, like no. you said, you know, big, big lad. Uh, played, played, played under Franco Smith at the Cheetahs as well. Uh, so, has you know, Franco Smith knows him. So, a good sign from from the new coach coming in that he's, he's back in a player he's previously played had under his tutelage it's a that's a good sign and you know obviously he's might, must have been turning up well at training because you again you just look at the, the Dar both Darge Darge has played six for Scotland you know Tom Gordon's <laughs> just been possibly the unluckiest man in rugby mm. to be like finally getting his slot and being like oh yeah this guy's phenomenal and then Darge turns up. <laughs> yeah, it's like this guy's been amazing, and it's like, yeah, mate, you're still only the fifth best open side in Scotland. <laughs> it's ridiculous the depth in open sides. Oh, that beer's fizzing. Yeah, it's ridiculous how quickly the depth has like uh, swelled in that position. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting back row, and we'll, we'll pause at this point to kind of come on to a slightly different bit of news uh, regarding Craig's favourite back row. Jack Dempsey, um, he said in an interview that he will imminently be making his announcement as regards to his decision about his international future. Uh, ten, that ten pounds will be changing hands soon, Mister Anderson. But in what direction? Uh, was it no, ten? In what direction? Pounds? I think it was ten. Yeah. 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 
I think so. I think I think there was there was a ten spot placed upon it. I still don't think he'll do it. No, no, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I think you know what I think as well because Townsend's that way. Sometimes he's just gonna be like, "Nah, I'm not picking him." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, oh yeah, he's a brilliant number eight. Yeah, I think he's a wonderful player, but nah, I'm not picking him." Nah. I remember so, when there was a interview with David Denton. For, uh, was it, oh, was it? Can I mean the, the guy's podcast? But it's when he's talking about his injuries. Um, and Townsend did sent. Denton thought he was playing really well, and Townsend didn't pick him. And he was like, "Yeah, I want you to work on this." And then it's like, "But my stats yeah. backed all this up, so I don't, I don't know how, how this was happening." Yeah. Um, we'll see. It's a, it's a very Townsend thing to do, isn't it? But <laughs> I think, I think, right. So for me, uh, I was slightly buoyed actually it. by by the interview because I think the language that was used in the interview. The way if it's if if it was written verbatim, um, then I think he's going to be announcing for Scotland quite soon because right, Mr. Glass half was, full. It was very very much. Uh, I oh, he's been looking into his Scottish roots and all that. I've been doing my Scottish roots. I've been looking at this and like he said something like, you know, my dad's as as Australian as they come. He's dying the like. Dying the will, uh, you know, dying the will, um, Australian, but I have to do what's best for me, or so, it's like something like that. And it's very like telling, uh, why would you make an announcement if he was if he isn't playing for Scotland? Uh, probably to put the put those rumors to bed, indeed, yeah, because it's, it's going to keep coming up. Simply, you know, he's going to get fed up of being asked, so. probably, uh, yeah, but I. I Actually, I take that point. I was actually coming from one, one of the guys on YouTube there, Joe's Black. It said, why would he make an announcement if he isn't playing for Scotland? Uh, yeah, we think he would make an announcement to say, you know what, I'm I'm considering myself for Aussie selection or I'm putting myself back in that hat or whatever. But uh, yeah, put the rumours to bed. But I agree with you. Maybe this is the final piece of the, the puzzle. And this is, in fact, he will be announcing. It's going to be so a massive what, press, press conference. What is Rugby Australia's... Uh, do you know what their what, eligibility is just now? Yeah, because I know they were allowing some overseas people. On. Like Nick White, for example, he left Exeter to go back to Australia so he could yeah. play for Australia. And then the next year, they're like, ah, if you had, it was a sort of, if you had more than X number of caps law, um, you know, then uh, then you could play. But I think they were limited. Right, so um, right, got it here. Right. Oh, cool. Sorry, I was reading right, the comments right. so, at the same no, time as losing track, I thought. That's all right, yeah. So, uh, in 2020, so, yeah, it's the, the Gitau's Law, as, as it was yes. uh, as it was announced in 2020. So, this allows the selection of two overseas-based players, regardless of the total overseas-based players in the squad, uh, who don't meet the original criteria to be selected. In February 2020, two further amendments were made to Gitau's Law. The new amendments would lower the original rule, which was 60 caps for Australia and a minimum of seven seasons at Super Rugby level to 30, ca- 30 test caps and five years at Super Rugby, respectively. Uh, the new amendment only allows for three overseas base players to be selected. Um, just after, five months later, uh, Dave Rennie urged Rugby Australia to expand it to four. So it's 30 caps, five years real, at Super Rugby. That was real damn serious. I think he's only got 17. I'm sure it was, a, it was 17 it or 27. 17? 17 or 27, I'm sure. Right, he's got. Rugby Union. Let's have a wee look while we're well, here. Uh, so, yeah, well, uh, you do that. I'll just. Do uh, you see the comment from uh, the esteemed Dr. Harley Worthy about who's on the bench for Benetton? Oh, I had not actually yet. So, uh, w- welcome, Harley. Great to have you along. Uh, interesting on the Benetton bench. Benetton, with all the N's, E's, and T's, uh, is Scotland's forgotten son, Sam Hidalgo Klein. Of course, he's there as well, isn't he? <laughs> oh, Probably I'm pulling up trees as well. Them. <laughs> he will be, yeah, yeah. New contract. It's, it's, Sam's at his absolute best. Uh, yeah, he'll go from he'll town to town him, like yeah, a gunslinger. Sure. Yeah, that's classic Sammy. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how he goes actually, because he for <laughs> it's so funny. Scotland scrum halves are just an indescribable enigma at every <laughs> possible point, and. Everybody who is the test scrum half for Scotland is not good enough, and there's always someone better. 
And Sam was that person for, a, and he almost usurped Greg Laidlaw at one point. He was well on the way. Um, and then Ali Price came along, and then we thought it was going to be those two for a while. And then I don't know, Sam had these, was it issues? Would we call them issues at Edinburgh? Whatever, he kind of fell out of favour. Um, but then, you know, he's played for some massive clubs, and he's, he's a Heineken Cup winner. <laughs> Let's not forget yeah. this. That's the thing, yeah. Like he's had, you know, he's been a bit of a journeyman, but he's had a good career. He's played Did he for play for Rasson. Like, uh, Did he have a short spell at Rasson? Yeah, I, I think it was. Him. Yeah, was it Rasson he went to? I th- yeah, was that before? I think that was after it. Yeah, before and do, uh, was uh, it yeah, World Cup. We we'll know some kind of tournament was on. I don't know. Hang on. <laughs> so, I mean, right. So here we go. We've got Edinburgh. <laughs> right, this is, here we go for a list of clubs. Right, Edinburgh Rugby. Scarlets, Harlequins, Racing 92, Leon, Exeter, and now Benetton. He's gaining a wealth of rugby knowledge, I'm sure. I'm sure he is, yeah. But, I mean, it could do with sticking in one place pretty well. But... What age is he? 29. Um, he's still an option. If, he's, if he plays well, I don't see why he can't get back in the squad. But, and, you know, like Zed, we get so many. Like Scott Steele, for example, he's dropped off the face of the planet. You know, the best defensive nine in the world as he was being touted. Um, and, and, and the best, you know, the only guy who could, like, turn his shirt number upside down and fit in seamlessly. Instantly fit in, exactly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, he's he's, he's got he's got quite the career behind him. And actually, do you know what? Just perfectly timed, like like he heard, it, this was basically like, you know, it's like he's, he'd heard on the grapevine that Sam Hidalgo Klein's name had been mentioned and Craig instantly appears. Craig Manson, good evening and welcome along. How the hell are you? Good evening, good evening. I am doing fine just off the rugby pitch tonight. So uh, sitting with my tea just sitting beside me and um, then all of a sudden I got had to put my tea down because you mentioned Sam Hidalgo Klein. <laughs> <laughs> just come, I mean, immediately a, worthy, a worthy cause to put your tea down. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sammy. Sammy, we're, we're just discussing that Sammy has the best journeyman career in history and has played for some absolutely massive clubs and will be playing against Glasgow at the weekend. He's left in some lovely cities as well. And so, yeah. absolutely, Hi, yeah. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably we'll see him off the bench, but uh, we'll see, we'll see as he as he tends to be um, comes off the bench to, to win <laughs> European cups and stuff like that, you know. That's it. Well, I swear to goodness, if he gets a turnover in the last minute against Glasgow, I'm, I'm, <laughs> the, 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 tables are getting flipped. It's going to be disgusting, especially if it's a if it's a Nigel Owen style turnover that clearly was the actually it was a horrible piece of cheating. Anywho, moving on, we're, we're just talking about Glasgow just now, Craig. So you can eat your tea. Um, we're, we're just moving moving on to the the backs just now. So we've got um, George Horn starting at nine, which is good to see. Um, and he will be halfback partner with Tom Jordan, mm. which has come out of nowhere. Um, Glasgow have had not had their problems to see Kip fly half uh, in the preseason with Ross Thompson having a back injury, Duncan Weir recovering from injury, and now uh, M- Miotti going down with a hamstring injury. So there has been a, there's been a bit of movement at fly half. Joel Hodgson had been brought in on a short term contract. He is now off to pastures new to enjoy the sights and sounds of Utah, um, which I think will suit his flamboyant hairstyle no end. <laughs> but yeah, Tom Tom Jordan, um, Super Six uh, graduate. Ian, uh, have you happened to come across him much in the Super Six? Uh, yeah, seen as um the the West Coast guy. Uh, I know I've why I said him. it, mate. <laughs> no. uh, that's um I've seen him a number of times. Uh, and in the first season, um when um well, he was the sprint series, then the championship, he was one of the best players in the league. Uh, you know him, him and Yari Fantini, who then actually went on to Benetton, but is has now left. Um, they were like two of the real standouts. Um, whether at ten or twelve, um. I think we played 12 uh, against against the Bulls, funnily enough, um, in the Inverness game. Uh, he fits in quite well. You know, he's, he's got a good eye for a gap. Um, 
yeah, he's not your Duncan Weir kind of tactical kick and ten. He will look to play. He will, look to, you know, uh, like I said, look for a gap. He'll look to play people in. Um, you know, he's a he's a running distributing ten. Um, he, with kicking game as well, obviously, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think he's he's a good talent. Um, be interested to see if he can step up to the level. It, it was really interesting when you see, and Craig, you, you've come across this in your time at Edinburgh quite a lot as well, when you see a young player kind of getting getting the keys to, to a, a big position, kind of out of nowhere. And yes, obviously injuries have kind of facilitated his his position, but there was other options available. And Franco has, has backed youth here, as we kind of thought he was being brought in to do. Um you know what? What's what's your sort of take on this? Uh, is this the changing of the guard? Is Duncan Weir about to finally be put out to pasture, or are we are we about to see the birth of the new Finn Russell, or what's going on here? Well, I, th- I think I think we talked about this before, and 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 if you look at Garbisi, Garbisi did not he not um uh get his start at nineteen or something like that? Yeah, he was, young, um, he was a young boy. Yeah. And and so you know, um, Franco Smith is just doing Franco Smith things, um, and and it can only um, be a positive step. He's he, there's no way he's getting to start in front of the jet, in front of the players that he's getting to start in front of if he can't do the job. Yeah, you know. And it's interesting when you mentioned Ian. You said he's a he's a distributing ten. He's a ten twelve kind of. As soon as you said ten twelve, I was all in, like, and not not <laughs> not and not twelve ten because that's a different thing, right? Let's get that clear because we know Ian's going to have a absolute meltdown if we go twelve ten here. But a ten twelve, I love a distributing ten that can put like I I, I don't think I like kicking tens. I, I I think I think I'm just like I just don't think I like them anymore. As soon as you said ten twelve, I was all in. I always remember, like, sort of never really appreciating Ronan O'Gara's style. Um, you know, I was younger then and not as tactically astute as I am now, <laughs> possibly. But yeah, you know, we all like to see, well, some of us do. There's the old curmudgeon, but most of us like to see fast attack and run. <laughs> <laughs> played, played by a 10 who wants to have a go and try things. Um, you know, your Carlos Spencer's, your Finn Russell's, um, Dan Carter's, and all that. Yep. Your Blair Kinghorns as well, to be fair. He is a running yeah, 10. Yeah, he likes to... certainly likes a gallop. He, li- yeah. he does. Yeah, he likes yeah. a gallop and we like that about him. We like that about him. Um, yeah, I remember my favourite Ronan Gara moment um, and I rem- it, like summed up Ronan Agara. I know, right, Ronan Agara had a wonderful career and was obviously a very, very good player and blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't at me. I don't even care, guys. But my favourite Ronan Agara moment was quite late on in his career against Scotland at Murrayfield where... He took a he took a took the ball and he looked to pass inside and realized I don't have that pass. I can't do that. And it wasn't a massive pass. Like most modern players would have just been like off you go. And he had to like turn to like kick it across the field. It made like an absolute of it. It was brilliant. Oh, was that that? That was twenty thirteen, wasn't it? It was I, yeah. It was class. <laughs> <laughs> It's class. So finish up with the, Gla- the Glasgow backs. We've got Captain Captain Kyle Stain on the wing at eleven. Surprised maybe not to see him at thirteen. Um, no, not really. Uh, I think Will Ruffin's clean still injured. He's one of the guys on the uh, the injured list, and Ollie yeah. Smith as well. So it's probably you know pieces of the jigsaw. Wow, um, last man standing for the wings, really. Mm. Um, yeah, he's he played out there quite a lot, hasn't he? Yeah, he ha- has. Yeah, I think I think he has played wing a lot, but I think it's that thing, uh, Craig, where I think a lot of Glasgow fans like him at thirteen because he he seems he has a really good defensive game about him, and he seems to organise really well from thirteen. So, like being captain as well, it's it was almost quite a natural fit for me to be like, well, you would play in the midfield, organise around you. Play, playing at 11 maybe isn't quite... But do you know what? You've got captains across the park, so it's not... It's He's not uh, f- 50th, 50th Warriors appearance as well. 50th appearance as well, making his de- yeah, captaincy debut. 50th appearance. And I think there was some stats about what uh, it'll be like. So there was a thing on uh, Kevin Miller's blog about 
if he's if, so if he starts on the wing or if he starts at thirteen, there's like different permutations for what captain he becomes and stuff. It's very interesting. So head over to his on top of the moon uh, blog and have a look at that. It's quite interesting as well. One big thing I was quite surprised. So the rest of the team kind of picks itself. You've got two of Poloto at 13. Can see Larry, who was great last season at 14. And Cole Forbes is the only fullback available at 15. The one that stands out, though, Stafford McDowell getting a run at 12. This, uh, to, to me, that's a, it's a huge statement. Stafford's been very vocal in the press, actually, in, pre- in pre-season about how liberated he feels under Franco Smith. And... um. You know, we've we've talked in this podcast quite a lot about, about you know certain players. Certain players click with certain coaches, and it is the making of them, or you know, you maybe have a wee falling out, and it's the the breaking of you. And Stafford for me is a guy who's been on the cusp of breaking through for so many years, and he's no a young boy anymore. And I thought last season was his last chance saloon, so it's interesting to see him get a run again uh, and see how he goes, Craig. A six foot four center, uh, six foot four, uh, twelve who can who can kick, who can run, who can crash, who can pass. I mean, we could do with one of them, right? You've been screaming for it. No, sorry, <clears throat> I take that because Sammy J. You, you all love uh, the weeds love Sammy J. So I'm not going to say anything anything negative about him. But Stafford McDowell at twelve, I think it'll be really interesting to watch him go and see what happens. And and this is what and and. You know, uh, obviously you've you've been discussing Glasgow a little bit, and and when I saw the team sheet, it's a it's the team sheet I've been screaming out for Glasgow to start messing around with for so long. Um, to see George Horn getting a start, um, Ali Price on the bench, you know, um, and Stafford Stafford's been in and around the squad, but he's never really got a full chance at it. And I think having um, you know, it's a youthful back line. And the important positions, apart from George, is no longer youthful, I suppose. But um, it, it was going to there, there's there's three there's three players that have got to prove themselves. Um, you know, nine, ten, and twelve. That's it, and abs- absolutely, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what the kind of rebound from the Danny Wilson era is, and see if you know in the short time Franco Smith's been there, if he's able to. Can I give because Horn Horn again? Like obviously he was injured for a, a huge portion of last season, but the times you did see him, confidence wasn't necessarily there. There was some bad habits kind of crept into his game where he was, you know, a bit nippy and things. And we like a nippy scrum half, but it'll be interesting to see if Franco Smith's managed to kind of get him back to his best. Because I mean, George Horn at his best, even in the preseason friendly against Worcester, and you saw. George Horn at his best, support lines, quick ball, doing exactly what. Uh, well, not Worcester as it ended up being air, um, but the first the preseason that friendly that went ahead, Horn looked good. I don't see any of it to be honest. <laughs> but I, you know, I've, oh, for goodness I've, sake. I've been a big fan of his for a while. Um, like I remember maybe four or five years ago being in the clubhouse after a game with Phil, and there was a a picture of. Um, George Horn like draped, you know, we've got the sort of banners draped down the sides of players, and he said he's going to be the next legend at this club. And I thought so at the same time, but you know, it's just the form of Ali Price. Um, you know, certain international coaches not giving him a fair crack of the whip, in my opinion. Um, and other things have maybe, and like you said, maybe some, you know, some ill discipline, um, maybe not re- realizing his full potential, but maybe stalled it a little bit, but uh. Yeah, he's he's such a talent, and his try scoring record is ridiculous. And points win games, so it's always helpful. Points win games, indeed, and that's what we'll be looking out for. Hopefully, hopefully we see that tomorrow night. Um, I'll Al McDonald, friend of the podcast, um, saying proper bam squad on the bench, mind. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fair. The bench. Uh, we've got Johnny Matthews, Ollie Kevill, Xander Fagerson. That's three people you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley <laughs> right away. Scott Cummings, Rory Darge, Thomas Gordon, as we've said, and then Ali Price and Duncan Weir. Now, the only concern for me on the bench there is you've got a 6-2 split, but you've got a dedicated 10. Uh, normally a 6-2 split, you don't play a dedicated 10. 
Um, that's going to be interesting. If, if a team goes down, we're well. If MD goes down, we're scrambling. Yeah, I mean, I can look at this. So there's there's reshuffles. So you know, Jordan can move to twelve. Stain can move to thirteen. Tui Pilotto can move to a wing spot. Um, my biggest concern would be if Cole Forbes went down. Oh, I suppose you could just stick Duncan Ware or Jordan back there. Aye. Oh, Duncan Ware at fullback. Oh, be still, my beating heart. Come on, Ian. Oh, uh, no, no. Let's, let, I, I'm, I'm no, sure he's, no. he's filled in there before. And when I say filled in, I mean it was obviously a, the the glass needed smashed. This was an emergency. <laughs> well, as, in, as in he stood in the position. No. Yeah. Uh, just I think stand there and lump it, mate. Mc, That's what it I think if if Forbes goes down, McDow- McDowell will go to fifteen. He's played fifteen before, so I reckon Jordan could probably do it as well. Um, I think he could, yeah. But yeah, let's not have Duncan Weir go at fifteen, yeah. please, for the love just, of all that's holy. Let's just keep um, Cole Forbes on the pitch. You'll, he's going to get sin bin. What I want to see I was going to say as long as he stays last. on the pitch. Exactly. Well, I'd say yeah, yeah. I, w- I want it to last as long as I can this season without having an absolute, like, unbelievable meltdown. So, like, a last-minute loss to Benetton with Duncan Weir at fullback would probably be a lot of buttons getting pressed all at once. <laughs> I'm not sure I would call i say, yeah, it would be like, yeah, you know, the glass would be getting Mash. smashed here, and that would be it. All the buttons mashed simultaneously. That's it. Right, let's go into... We're going to scoot across the M8. Uh, we're not going to get held up in traffic um, because it's nice and quiet this time of night. But we are, we're heading over to, to Craig's uh, charges. Um, no team as yet, but the news, the big news coming out of Edinburgh, you've, you've confirmed your co-captains for the year. No surprises, I presume? Yes, no surprises. Um, big huff for me. You don't sound delighted, I- Craig. Um, I'm not a fan of co-captains. I've never been a fan of co-captains, and I never will be a fan I of co-captains. Seen this, <laughs> um, so I just it's it's don't get me wrong. Um, they're two fine gentlemen, um, but I think it was time for Jamie Ritchie to take the reins. And and no disrespect to Gilco, because Gilco's done a great job, um, and uh, and obviously he's he's captain Scotland over in Argentina, but. Um, I just, uh, you know, um, I find it. I, I've never been a fan of it. So, uh, what what a co captain does give you, however, is that you've got that ability to have one rested and one on the field, and you don't have to name them every single game because of the captain. But, uh, um, you know, so well done to them both, and I think they'll both they'll both discharge their duties in a fantastic way, and they'll both be strong for Edinburgh. Um, uh, putting my Personal thoughts aside, yeah, co captains is always a strange one, and um, it seems to be a fairly let's say it seems to be a fairly Scottish quirk. Ian, we don't tend to see other teams, particularly in the URC, doing co captains. Seems to be a Scottish thing. Yeah, it does. Um, I was just trying to think of anywhere else where I've seen it. Um, completely can't not certainly not off the top of my head anyway. Um, can't think of one in any of the top leagues, you know, uh, England, France. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know all the French captains, to be fair. Um, and you don't see a huge amount of it, although now we get top 14, we can. Um, exactly. But it's, yeah, I don't I don't really get it. I think you should have a captain because, you know, they all talk, we all talk about leadership groups and that. Um, so you've got many captains, but surely there should just be the one point of contact. And, you know, even if you're not, I mean, when Al Kellogg was like the captain at, at Glasgow, he wasn't getting picked every time because we had yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had an on fire Johnny Gray and a certain guy called Leone Nakarawa um, yeah. Yeah. fill in those positions, so he wasn't really needed. <clears throat> um, but he was still the captain, and just you know, just whoever was playing um, on on pitch was the on field captain. Um, what I think a lot of other teams have done actually is they have a club captain, and then mm-hmm. it's you've got a club captain, then you've got match day captain, which doesn't necessarily need to be the same thing, but your club captain's your representative at turning up at press events and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, and your match day captain's just the guy who the ref's going to talk to. Exactly, exactly. I, just... I, th- I think the big thing is that for me though is that I guess I guess that are they maybe part buddying him up? 
so that he's got you know he's got someone who can guide him through the next season and then he goes to full captain or yeah. a single captain next year. I don't know. Um and, and I guess that was it, for Glasgow it seemed to work because you had your yin and your yang off you had your vice you had I think at the time it was Johnny Gray and there was Col 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 Collie and Wilson who, were the, the two Aye and and, co -captains. and you've got and you've got you know someone to calm Wilson down and, and, and let him be the fun happy go lucky guy that he is but also someone to go oh, hang on mate settle down. So um I think you know you don't have that with those two. I think I think it's more the fact you've probably got a little bit of still a bit of youthful enthusiasm with Jamie Ritchie, you know, even though he's not not the youngest boy anymore, you know. Was Pergos and Gray the first ever one Glasgow tried? I seem to have a notion of that occurring. I know Johnny Gray was co-captain at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Silly. <laughs> yeah. Not my favourite thing. No, no. Uh, uh, interestingly, as well, Craig... Well, we also need to think, is Richie, because there's a, there's a new Scotland captain, we assume, going to be announced, and his, his name is firmly... Uh, you know, his name's been... His name's in the hat written about 40 times um, out of 50 names to be pulled out because uh, we all think it's going to happen. So is this his, his sort of, like you said, sort of bedding in session? Yeah, and it could be the fact that if he's if he's going to go down the route of, um, of Scotland captain, um, then you didn't, I guess you don't really want to have him doing a full job as captain at the club because he's going to be away an awful lot with duties and he's going to be away at press junkets and stuff like that and then launches and this, that and the other. So I guess I, I suppose there is that as well. Yes, that is an interesting I think the, the, the interesting thing for fans looking at it is there's two, two potential Scotland internationals. John, you sound like a hyper man. Has necessarily been... Connection's gone. Uh, d d discuss that it's not Scotland and uh, discuss Scotland internationals for me. Go, guys. What do you mean about Scotland internationals? What Scotland internationals? I, I, as in, the, there's two Scotland internationals who've been picked as captains. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess that that. Well, the the, the question is, is it? Um, they have been Scotland. They are Scotland internationals at the moment. But is is Grant Gilchrist? Um, going to be involved in the summer tests because there's a hell of a lot of people coming through that could be doing his job for him. So there's there's also that. Don't get me wrong, I, I want to see him play for Scotland, but um, but there are there's a lot more set, you know second rows coming through now um, that, that 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 could take his place. Um, a lot more younger guys coming through, so it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if I still sound like a Dalek. No, you're fine, John. You're fine. Uh, it's, it's, it's jumping a wee bit, about a wee bit, but that's all good. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it is, it's interesting. So we'll, we'll see how the, the teams go. Obviously, we're expecting the Edinburgh team tomorrow um, for their, their big kickoff on Saturday at home at the Dam Health. I'll get the right Welsh team this time. Um, <laughs> you'll be... You, you. I mean, you've said in a few, a few uh, podcasts, Craig, in the build-up to this, that you know you'll be, you're always confident in the damn health, and you'll be expecting your boys to come out full guns. And um, I think it's interesting the way Glasgow have utilised the picked some of the Scotland players who were away are on the bench. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Are, are, are you expecting a full strength Edinburgh or a fairly, fairly close to full noise? No, I I think uh, what was quite obvious um, with the two warm up games that we played, um, there's a, still a lot of the Scotland lads are not around. Um, you know, there was a there was a smattering of players in there, so um, we'll wait and see. Um, but uh, and also there's a there's a there's a few injuries hanging around as well. Um, I don't because I think I don't think we're going to get to see Wes Goosen play just yet because I think he's still got an injury and um, that he's picked up in training. Um, and then, um, you know, but one thing I'm hoping to see, and I've got my fingers crossed for, is Bill Matta playing on the weekend because he's um, he's come already been out in the press saying he's excited to get started again. I've I fit and firing Bill Matta will be a massive addition to that that Edinburgh team, and it was something that despite how well he's went last season. You know, it's something that any any team in the world would would benefit from. Um, 
we've got we've got a wee bit of time left for the for the the lovely free view listeners. Um, I I want to, I want to touch on something a bit different. Um, so we've had, <laughs> we've had notification on Twitter. Uh, Ian's waving his yeah. waving his hand. Um, Scotland's Scotland's World Cup women's squad got announced a few hours ago. Absolutely, yeah. a few hours ago. Yep, excellent, excellent. Yep. So thirty-two player squad. Uh, yep. Well, sixteen and sixteen split. Um, it didn't look like I could, there wasn't any sort of standout names missing. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any injuries, but it's well, it's it's the same group that well the the core group that we've uh, that we've seen over the last few years. Um, so not a huge amount of surprises there. Uh, but you know, obviously it's well. I mean, for these players, it's the the biggest deal of their career because. Here they are, history breakers, um, going to a World Cup. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous, Sam. I think we've got look, in New Zealand as well. It's a World Cup in, in New Zealand um, when New Zealand aren't playing just as well as they as they used to play. So it's quite an exciting time. Um, and, and also, you know, obviously Scotland women will have pressure on their shoulders from themselves, but they have no pressure from home support and it's going to be an interesting one for them to go out and just experience it and and hopefully take a couple of scalps. It'll be really interesting. Yeah, I mean fingers crossed that the, the, the as, as you say they go out there and make it make a good show of themselves. They're up against up against some very, very um big sides as well. And it is interesting when you see uh the England women's side winning again, uh, and you know what was it? They've lost three games in fifty, or something ridiculous like that. Um, yeah, yeah, you can't really see past them for the actual title, but everyone else, you know, it's 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 great. We're going to have a a period of time promoting women's rugby yet again, and it'll be brilliant to see, and hopefully, you know, plenty of press coverage, plenty of coverage from us. Um, on on the exploits of the, the the women out at the World Cup, um, and to your point, Ian, about a settled squad, it is really good. You know, there's there's been many many times over the years where you know having having a, a squad that you don't necessarily notice any omissions, but you're glad to see there's there's big names in there that have played very well for Scotland over the years that will be. Delighted to get to a World Cup and and break break a wee bit of make a wee bit of history with that as well. And the good news is that all the games are on weekends because they're obviously with the time difference in New Zealand, it's you know it's uh, daft o'clock. Get the coffees on times. Um, so Sunday, uh, first game Sunday the 9th of October uh, against Wales at five forty five in the morning. Um, Australia Saturday the fifteenth of October at three a.m. You know, if you're one of these kind of young people who likes to stay up late, you could you could just get some vodka Red Bulls in you. Um, guess, who's, then... guess who's recording them? <laughs> 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 oh, and then, then like, New Zealand, Saturday the 22nd of October, 4.45am. Um, you know, anyone who's used to staying up for pay-per-view boxing and UFC and all that, you're, you'll be well attuned to these kind of times, so... Uh, I imagine Cammy Scott will be available for messaging to keep yourself awake. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be it'll be really interesting to to see how it goes, and uh, yeah, we'll be following all the coverage of that in due course. Um, we we should probably also just at this point, uh, you know, sad sad news reaching the world rugby uh, today. Uh, Eddie Eddie Butler has. Uh, passed away age 65 uh voice of rugby for for many people um you know followed on uh from from the voice of rugby bill mclaren followed on in terms of commentary from him i know the welsh community in particular are very uh, have been very complimentary and very um um delivering lots of praise for for his contribution to rugby over the many years and i think a lot of people the the, the annual um, kickoff of our Six Nations and the, the Eddie Butler montage uh, was a massive thing. So uh, sad, sad news and obviously will be well missed. I know we don't necessarily often agree with Brian Moore 
on the on this podcast. I know he's a bit, been a better commentator than he has um, than, than he was player uh, against Scottish rugby. But um, his his tweet talking about his his friend, his co commentator for many years, uh, is very very heartfelt. And uh, you know, um, thoughts go out to everybody at this time for that. Um, so yeah, rugby's rugby's um, rugby's back. <laughs> Apparently, um, I'm going to I'm going to move tone very slightly here, though. Okay, we've got sad news. We've got rugby world cups. We've got URC kicking off. But I'm going to pull this up two seconds. Right, we are going to do a little bit of this. Right, are we ready? We're ready, guys. Yes, it's time. Well, we look high and we look low. We sing doggy back on in speedos, but I just wanna know, did you see the legend that's doing it down the lane? Yes, Ian's look of puzzlement. He is not sure where this is going. Uh, no, no, yes, he's so... excited for jingles. <laughs> Doogie Donnelly's finally got to him. Have you seen that? The excitement has absolutely ruined John. It's, it's broken, John. <laughs> His Wi Fi has died. Yeah. We've just got a smiley face to remember him for. <laughs> it's like it's like the end of a, a show, like the credits, you know. And they just yep. freeze frame it over the credits. That's it. We're done. So it's going to be. Uh, we've still got like three minutes of uh, of non um, uh, non Patreon time. So is he coming back? Has he he's moved slightly? Um, <laughs> do we just fill, do we just spoil it for him because because we can't hear him? I mean, I don't know who's... Do you know who the Doogie Donnelly is? Um, I don't know if he was... Uh, oh, he's away. Mate. Oh, he's away. I don't know if he'd seen a Doogie Donnelly, but I know that um, one of our uh, one of our um, uh, secret Super Squirrel um, uh, Facebook page users found a Doogie Donnelly doll online. Yes, the Doogie Donnelly action figure. Action figure, and I've just... Uh, it didn't have a red... I was really disappointed because it didn't have a red wine glass in its hand, so... Um, it's uh, but uh, just take my money now. Yeah, I think they should do like an updated version, uh, c- complete with sound bites of the, the the anecdotes from uh from when when he was on their end of season. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know. I'm a back. Some, some, some You're back not, now. They, there we go, yeah. John's. Av- we've just, just spoiled it. We've just spoiled it for you, John. What my action figure? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Do you know what? I got sent that by four different people earlier on. <laughs> and I was very excited. And, and my internet has clear, like, clearly Doogie does not want this news out because he's clearly like cut the cord on my internet to make sure I can't <laughs> tell the world that he's got an action figure. The big, the big debate for me is like, right, so if Doogie's got an action figure, who else has got one? Like, do you get is it, is it like a, 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 a Scott Sport collection? Do you get Jim it's, Delahunt? Yeah, do you get like a desk? It's like Subutio when you get all the backroom stuff, like I had a oh. scoreboard and substitutes bench and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, do like, you get the whole desk? You've got a camera guy, and then there's Hazel Irvin, <laughs> <laughs> and it, like the, the the Hazel even if they did a re, uh, you know, a sort of up to date model of the Hazel Irvin doll, it would still look exactly the same. Um, <laughs> not 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 aged a day. Not aged a day. No, I mean, yeah, I, I was thinking, do you get like Chick? Des Lynham. Des Lynham. Is Chick Young, is he deserving of a, like, does he get a figure? Well, well, yeah, he can, yeah, with the microphone in hand, put the microphone sold separately. <laughs> You've thought about this too much, you. <laughs> no. He has maybe not enough. Clearly considered this. <laughs> Clearly considered this. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how how much would how much does a Doogie Donnelly sealed action figure go for on eBay? I wonder. Do you think you can buy one of those? I would oh, hope so. I would hope so. I mean, it's absolutely fabulous. Sorry, I didn't even know the one existed. Priceless, priceless I would say. Um, Let's see. Buy it now, price three hundred pounds. <laughs> see what we've got. Right, so on eBay just now, you can get a Doogie Donnelly superb signed photograph for eight quid or best offer, right? Maybe seven ninety nine figure. Action! Oh, I mean, I hope this is a thing because if it is, I'm buying it right now. Uh, no, 
not on eBay. Just sign photographs. So if anyone out there is the proud owner of a Doogie Donnelly uh, action figure or or wants to sell one, um, you know, obviously we're in the market for that. So give us a wee shout um, and we'll, we'll do what we can to, to come to a, a reasonable arrangement. Bearing in mind, sign photograph is only eight quid. So, you know, let's let's not get not get stupid about this. Be amazing if one pops up on Bargain Hunt. Oh, how good would that be? Forget about that antiques roadshow. And then they get Doogie himself to narrate, narrate it, and oh, just be, just be magnificent. But, but yeah. So uh, uh, for for those of you joining us, where it's Doogie Donnelly, that is our player spotted section, or well, not even players, Scottish rugby spotted. Um, so you know, please, if you come across a player down your local Tesco, you, you, what are you saying? Is it Scottish rugby affiliates? <laughs> Affiliates, yes. Uh, if you discover that one of the strength and conditioning coaches from Edinburgh likes to shop at Tesco and is a, a is into the Mars bars, or you discover that one of the players is a big fan of a Greg's uh, steak bake, then please give us a wee shout and we will give you a shout out and uh, we'll call this out because we want to know all and basically the the nitty gritty detail the smaller the detail you can provide just absolutely go into it because we want to hear everything on this so uh but yeah where's the good on is back based on an action figure fantastic well there's that plus i did i did have a player spotted for you you did fantastic i Craig. did Bring um it. Uh, glasgow warriors stalwart it's a bit of a cheat to be honest with you though john but it's a uh, glasgow warrior stalwart and um Club Centurion, if not, maybe he's getting close to two, you know, 150 uh, um, appearances. But anyway, um, uh, our master Chris Fazzaro was down at training last night, uh, tonight. Um, he was there. He's doing a little bit of forward work with our senior senior men tonight. So, uh, yeah, he was there. All, so that's what we're looking for. To have those connections. Yeah. And... I, I'm going there on Saturday. What colour of boots um, was he wearing? Uh, I didn't see because I was on the I was on the pitch number two rather than pitch number one, which is the fancy one. <laughs> oh, honest, honestly, Craig. Well, that's the sort of detail we want. What <clears throat> colour of boots was he wearing? Does he does he do like a standard knot, or has he got a fancy knot on his boots? I want he, I want really in depth, like proper stalker material. Right, but obviously, don't stalk next people because that's wrong. what. What flavour of Powerade <laughs> was he drinking? Uh, oh, big, big decision. It's got to be blue. Audi. Uh, just that, or... that other, that red one. I always associate Chris Fazzaro with red Powerade because I throw him throwing up quite violently ahead of a Glasgow oh. Warriors game. Like, <laughs> it's like, you know, and they just stopped at the corner of the pitch to like sip our pints and like sort of watch the, the rest of the warm up, the end of the warm up, and there's Fuzzy absolutely launching red powder. I'm like, is he coughing up blood? Not red Powerade school. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and that's what red Powerade will do to you. That that stuff is nasty. I like red Powerade. I'm a fiend oh. for cherry flavour stuff. Oh, see, I like a cherry flavour thing normally as well, but no, no. Powerade, it's got to be blue all day. All day. So, so yeah, there you go. You've got our, uh, our our tips on power aids. We've got some player spotted. We've got all sorts of things happening. Um, URC is back, and we will be continuing our coverage of it. We are now going to leave our uh, free view customers. We are going to move over to the subscription based model, like all good sports, uh, and we are going to move over to our Patreon, where we can cut loose a wee bit and do a wee bit of hands in the ruck, but. For tonight, it has been an absolute pleasure, boys, to have you along. Um, we will say goodbye to our uh, our free customers now. Good night from me. Good night from Craig and Ian. Ciao. Good night. I'm sorry, I was late. You see. <laughs> nice. <laughs>